In 2015, I started to experience the chest pains after getting a viral infection, and that turned into pericarditis, pleurisy, and a low vitamin D deficiency. Like one day, he's 20 years old, he's healthy, he's able to run, he's able to do things, and then almost the next day, he couldn't go up a flight of stairs without, you know, going out of breath. I actually got through that, but when the other pain started to happen, it turned into nerve damage. And how it was explained to me was my body still thought I had the pericarditis. So it was fighting something that wasn't there. And it was fighting my nerves. And I, and I had no idea. So that's how I got the peripheral neuropathy. My head was spinning. I mean, I, I didn't really know how to feel about life at the moment. I went from a very fast, athletic football player to, at this time I left the school in Ohio in May 2015. I was a college dropout. I didn't have any money. I, I did go through a point where I was minutes away from doing something that would have ended my life. So January 2018, I woke up and the only thing I could feel was about my face and that was it. It was like I was trying to lift my limbs, but they wouldn't move. And in that moment, God showed me five people that had been there for me my entire life. And it was my mom, it was Jesus Christ, it was my dad who's like my mentor, and his wife who's like my second mom, and there's a little kid who has spina bifida who's like my best friend. And when I dedicated my whole being to those five people, I was able to get up the next day and I haven't stopped since. Nobody can tell me that God didn't heal my body that day. And that's how I started feeling better. When I look back over his life, and I'll never forget when the doctors in Ohio sent him home, um, bring tears to my eyes and told him to prepare his family that he's gonna die. And for him to come from that to this. After I did all that and I was able to get up and start working out, you know, after that, uh, I sent an email out to schools within like a two and a half hour, three hour radius of me. And thank God Salisbury was only about an hour away. And Coach Wood emailed me back the next day. They were telling me that Salisbury needed a receiver to change the game to take the, not just that team this year, but the whole program to the next level. So I felt like I can make not only a difference this year as a Seagull, but for all of the years and people who come after me as a Seagull. The key to this year was definitely senior leadership because we had over 15 seniors. And I mean, I haven't played with a group of brothers like this in a, in a very long time. And that was the key to winning the NJAC, first of all, and then making it to the Elite Eight. Uh, I'm elated to be called the Mayo Clinic Comeback Player of the Year because if I would have went through all of that and just stayed in the bed and not done anything to make it worth it, I, I wouldn't be able to impact anyone. So I really think the comeback was not only for me, but for people who aren't even born yet, who aren't even thought about yet, that may see this story one day and be impacted. Even if it reaches one person, I, I, just, I just know everything that I went through was for somebody else. Octavian, he was a very interesting kid. He was a young kid with an old soul, but he wasn't the type of kid that had to be in the in crowd, but people loved being around him. And the sports that he played, if it had the word ball in it, he played it. He played baseball, he played basketball, of course, football. I always taught my boys, idle hands is a devil's workshop. It was forced on them to do something and be productive. My mama did not raise a quitter. If I had to sum everything up, like in this moment, after everything that's happened, it would be, I would do it all over again if I had to. If it meant sitting right here in this seat and being a Salisbury Seagull.